You're plotting a new course again, aren't you? The currents before us are ever-changing. We must adapt and press forward if we are to see our journey's end. And how will we know when we get there? Hello, I am Mal, and welcome to Civilization VI. I am grinning ear to ear. It's the middle of the night on October 21st of 2016. I've been really looking forward to playing this game and sharing the experience with all of you. This will be my first actual real full playthrough of Civilization VI. Uh, I do bring about 400 hours of Civilization V experience into the game, but Civilization VI has got a lot of elements that are very new and fresh and I think interesting. Um, so please bear that in mind as we go through this series. I hope that you'd be willing to give me some advice and ideas on how to be more efficient and how to better play the game, and we can sort of learn it together. At least that's my hope. All right, let's jump in. Create game. Now I'm going to go ahead and play. I've looked at all the leaders, and the one that I thought was really interesting, especially for a first play, is Pedro II from Brazil. So... He gets uh, Amazon, he gets Rainforest Tiles, plus one adjacency bonuses for Campus, Commercial Hub, Holy Site, and Theater Square Districts. Rainforest Tiles provide plus one housing for neighborhoods built adjacent to them. Magnanimous, after recruiting and patronizing a great person, 20% of said great person points cost are refunded. That's pretty cool. Then they have a unique unit, and their unique unit replaces the battleship, so it's stronger and it's unlocked by nationalism. And then Street Carnival, this district unique to Brazil, replaces the entertainment complex. Uh, so it gives you plus two amenities, and then you can also do the event itself, which will give you plus one amenity. And then you get... doesn't tell you exactly how many, but it says you also get great points once completed. So that's something else that's very different in Civ 6 versus Civ 5, is how you go about recruiting uh, great persons. They, they are different. They sort of cycle through and you compete for said great persons in different categories. So we'll, we'll get into all that, but let's go ahead and start up the game. Oh, wait a minute. Is this who do we want to play against? Well, let's look at advanced setup here. 
Standard rules is fine. I am going to be playing on Prince difficulty. Obviously, there's, you know, all the way up to Deity, but <laughs> I think Prince is safe for us to start at. Again, remember, first real game. Ancient Era to start. Standard speed is fine. Let's go with... Um... Pangea. And standard map size. Temperature standard, rainfall. I think all of this we can leave standard. Uh, starting position balanced, actually. I think that makes more sense. All players have equally good starting positions. Yeah, let's do that. And then for victory conditions, I guess we'll just leave them all in? Yeah. And then... For players, you know what? Let's leave that. Let's 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 leave that random. At least everyone else is, right? <laughs> we'll pick ours. Okay, let's get into this. From the first stirrings of life beneath water, to the great beasts of the Stone Age, to man taking his first upright steps, you have come far. Now begins your greatest quest, from this early cradle of civilization on towards the stars. Your people look to you, Emperor Pedro II, to lead Brazil onto the world stage. Use your reputation as a patron of artists, scientists and engineers to draw the greatest minds to our fertile home. For it is in the lush rainforests, teeming with life, that your people thrive. Sounds good. And yes, we know winter is coming. <laughs> the fact that they got him to do the voices in this is just awesome to do the narration. Oh, so good. Okay, so we will sort of explore the interface as we go along. But first thing to take note of, I think, is probably the world track. Excuse me, world tracker. So we've got our research that we need to choose. And then we have right here, you can see code of ethics. So we've got a civics tree. And we've got a traditional research tree, and you do both side by side. Let's take a look here at the technology tree. Now, one of the big changes in Civilization VI, you'll see this right here where it says to boost, find a natural run wonder, or to boost, uh, found a city on the coast. If you can meet whatever the um, boost requirement is, then it's going to speed up said research. And the same thing for the civics tree as well. If... You can, like for instance here, grow your civilization to at least six population, then progress towards early empire would then get a boost. So it would reduce the amount of time it's going to take us to get that. All right, so we're doing code of laws to start off. And then for research, now research used to be, especially on higher difficulties, pretty sort of set, right? So you would take like pottery and then you move into something else and then so on and so forth. Um, it's not so clear in, in Civilization VI what your first research should necessarily um, B, because the way improvements are handled and the way that these bonuses, these boosts work for research, um, sometimes you almost want to delay certain things until you've got the bonus to research and then you go after it. So anyway, I don't want to confuse you. I don't want to overwhelm myself or you if you're new to the game. So we'll get into all that. Um, but again, it's not necessarily clear exactly what we're going to get. So let's take a look. See, what do we got? Well, we have... This is rainforest, right? And so is this. So this all looks pretty good because we get bonuses for this stuff. Rainforest. We got some bananas down here. Now that's a bonus resource and not a luxury. These furs, however, are one, two, three. So we're in range for those. We've got some stone up here. Horses. We've got cattle. Sheep. One, two, three. And we're out of range on the sheep. That's okay, though. Bananas, bananas. Now, if we went across... I'm trying to decide, should we settle on spot or not? Hmm. Let's take a look at this. This is another new feature. Uh, excuse me, feature lenses. So if we go like this, and we go settler... The bright, the bright, or excuse me, the dark green right here where it says fresh water plus three. That means we get plus three housing if we establish there. So along the river here, obviously, these are all plus three housing. I'm thinking over here, 
next to these rainforest tiles is probably the way to go. We've got one rainforest tile here, but we've got... Two, three. That'll still be in range. One, two, three. That'll still be in range. Hmm. I'm going across. I hope that's not a mistake. <laughs> okay, next turn. All right, let's set our research. We want to go for animal husbandry first. Recommended settlement location. Really? Why there? I like this spot right here. This is, I'm doing it. Boom. Okay, now let's take a look at the city in a little bit more detail. So we click on the city, then we click... Here, let me let me back out. Click on the city, then we click right here for city details, and it gives us everything. So here's our seven turns until the next uh, citizen is born, how much extra food we have, which obviously fuels growth. Amenities, uh, which is... I mean, happiness is still here, it just sort of basically lays underneath these amenities, and amenities would be luxury items, and if memory serves me correctly, one amenity will support four cities, I think? Happiness for four cities? So you want to kind of build that way, so four cities or eight cities or twelve cities are going to be, you're going to be more efficient with your supply of amenities based on that. Now, let's see, where is our housing? Here we go. So we have six housing, and as you can see here, we've got one housing from buildings. And this sets your population cap, which actually starts at one notch below. So like if we were at five of six housing, we would then start to see penalties for towards our growth. You need to have enough space for your people to live in. And that's where things like neighborhood districts come in, because you'll be able to expand the amount of housing that you have. Now, we've got housing from water, we've got plus five right there. We've got six total, we only have one citizen, so we're not having any issues, obviously, right now. And you can see right here it says to gain housing, place improvements, farm, fishing boats, pasture, plantation, camp, so on and so forth. Currently what we have, here's what we have in the city and what bonuses we're getting from that. We don't have any trades going on, no wonders. We don't have any districts yet. And we obviously have no religion yet. The other good stuff, science per turn, culture per turn, faith, gold, so on and so forth, are up at the top. The little changes here to um, how to view the landscape, the lenses are all right here, so tourism, political, settler, appeal, so on and so forth. And you can toggle strategic view right here. Okay, alright. Choose production, we're going to grab a scout, I think that makes sense. And then for research... Hmm. I guess we'll go for animal animal husbandry first. Let, actually, let's look at what's required to get a bonus for that. Oh, okay, the baseline text, you can't get a boost to, so then it doesn't really matter. Okay, we'll go with animal husbandry then. Movement cost three, huh? Okay. Wheat. Stone right along the water. Rainforest over here. That might... Yeah. Let's see, one, two, three. Yeah, right over here. Might have a second city location. Who knows? We've discovered another continent. We realize there are worldwide trading opportunities. Oh, I thought I set Pangea. Okay, apparently I didn't. <laughs> well, that's fine. Whatever, it's good. We're fine. New continent discovered. Okay. So this is Arctica, and what's this one? That's their same continent. 
Okay, there we go. Different continent. Laurentia. Okay, fine. And what did we get progress towards? Foreign trade, right? Yeah, boosted. Discovered a second continent. Okay, nice. Excellent. So that worked out in our favor. Our city state neighbors have made a Yep, copy that. Regard inspiration for mysticism. That's the current quest. This is different too. So the way that you influence uh, city-states is that you, you send envoys, you earn envoys for various things, you send them, and if you um, send one envoy, you get the bonus that's listed, in this case three, you get something else, six, and so on and so forth, and if you're the, you know, if you have the most envoys, in, you know, essentially the most influence in a city-state, then you get their um, sort of special bonus at the end, and each one's unique, and some of them are actually really powerful. I've like I said, I've watched um, a lot of different videos and developer videos and what have you and other people's uh, Let's Plays, kind of learning, trying to learn Civ 6 ahead of time, obviously. And um, there's some that are, like, darn near game-changing, so that's pretty cool. Sure, inspiration for mysticism. Okay, so let's go over here. Let's take a look at that real quick. Found a, pa a, pantheon, a pantheon. Okay, so we'll try to. It would be good to get a religion if we could. Hey, next turn. Get our scout out here. Coffee, coffee. Hmm, this might be good over here, too. Reconnaissance units like scouts are unique. Hmm, which way do we want to go? Let's, let's check out to the south first. Choose production. Let's grab... I'm tempted to grab a slinger because there's some early... There's some early boosts you can get by, like, killing, um, killing a barbarian with a slinger, killing X number of barbarians. Or a monument. All right, go for the monument. Wow, look at this place. Three sources of coffee and ivory? I mean, you could certainly sell off two of these if you, you know, if you wanted to, especially if your city count's not too high. This could be really, really good. Seems like a likely, seems like a likely candidate for a second location. I am fond of pigs. Dogs look up to us. Cats look down on us. Pigs treat us as equals. <laughs> okay, let's see. Um, hmm. To boost, kill a unit with a slinger. Yeah. All right, let's just go for the baseline tech since they don't require... Um, there's no boost that you can get for it. But let's just grab... Let's grab... Does mining make sense? Yeah, we got a hill right here. Oh, the coast is right there, huh? Okay. Another city-state, and what's your quest? Recruit one great gen... Oh, okay, well... That's not something I'm gonna be prioritizing, I don't think.
Salt. Okay. Stone. We got crab over here, which by the way is not, as you can see, it's not a luxury resource, it's a bonus resource, so. It doesn't count as an amenity. Your contact with other city-states has crystallized your ideas on governing your own people. Progress toward political philosophy has advanced considerably, so it's been boosted. Inspiration. Nice! Great! And Vilnius. Vilnius, what do you want? You want a great general too? Well, okay, so now getting a great general actually might make sense, since we have two quests for the same thing. Hmm. That's great works. Great people. So, like I like I had mentioned earlier in the video, you essentially compete for these people. So, like, right now, it's us versus these unmet people. We're all at nothing because we don't have um, any... We're not generating any points yet. But you could, in theory, um, skip someone. Like, you know, like, I don't, you know, I don't want this person. I'll let somebody else get it. And then you can go for the next one if what they're offering um, is more palatable to you. Because they're not, like I, like I mentioned, they're not all the same. They're all different, which is really, really cool. I like this that system quite a bit, actually. Here, let's just set you to go like that. And set you to go... Yep, like that. That looks good. What is this? Oh, incense. All right. Hmm. Do I backtrack or keep... I guess we keep going. However, I think I'm going to move my... Warrior back towards... Oh, we must have encountered... What do we got there? Tribal village. Okay. We're gonna need to go for that, then. Enacting new policies in our government can be of great benefit. It is not wisdom, but authority that makes a law. Okay, so let's look at... The new government system. So we just completed that civic that gave us access to these cards, and based on the type of government you have dictates what kind of cards you can place. You've got military policies, economic policies, diplomatic policies, and then wild cards, which can be any of them. So let's look at what we have. We've got double experience for recon units. Okay, that's pretty good, but I'd rather survive my initial fights with barbarians once we get to that. So I'm going to grab discipline, drop that in the military policy slot. So we get plus five unit combat strength when fighting barbarians. And then for economic policies, plus one production or plus one faith and plus one gold. I'm going to take plus one production right now because that actually is kind of significant because we have next to nothing. So yeah, so I'm going to grab that right now. Uh, let's see and go ahead and confirm that. Now you can change these at any time um, for a cost, but every time you, you earn new civics, it's going to prompt you for that and you can make the changes that you want to make. Uh, no, no, I'm not going to let you get that, the goods right there, dude. That's not happening. Go away. Okay, we'll go with foreign trade next, since that's boosted. Are you going to block us, city-state? Are you going to, like, troll us, or is your warrior going to leave? Almost done with our monument? Good. He left. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and grab... Hmm. Should I go ahead and grab a Settler, you think? Or a Slinger? I'm... gonna grab a Slinger, actually. 
And how many turns until we grow again? Growth in four turns. All right, let's look at the assignments. Um, two production, one gold, two food. Three production, two food, one gold. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Was the best tiles? Growth in three. Let's go for that for now. Oop, there we go. Forty gold. Okay, well, that's not bad. Ah, there we go. Barbarian camp. Who deserves more credit than the wife of a coal miner? I don't know. The canaries that kept them safe? <laughs> I mean, they were committed, right? Let's see. Kill a unit with a slinger. Right, we're going to try to do that. While we're slinging ready in just a couple of turns here. I think three. Alright, let's do pottery then. Two turns for that slinger. Changing. Okay, so we picked up some new policies, we picked up the ability to do joint wars, and we picked up trading. Two gold from trade routes? Nope. Don't want God King, don't want survey, don't want maritime industry, so we don't need to change anything. We're fine. And then what do we want to pick up? Probably early empire. Or we could, well, we need to pick something. It's only six turns to do this. You boost, you can get a boost by improving three tiles, but I mean, it's not that significant anyway. And it's sort of required, right? We need to do this to progress through. And this is 12 turns. I'd rather get the boost for this before we commit to it. Yeah, let's just do Craftsman then. I think that makes sense. Get him! Get him! Oh, oh! Alright, wow! So if we attack them... Then the other guys are gonna be able to finish them off. So I think what we'll do is we're just gonna fortify right here and see if the city-state unit attacks them, because if not, we can come over and finish it with this slinger, which would be better for us. Okay, now let's get away from that. Yeah, we, we don't need any of that business, thank you very much. Okay, now we're gonna go for a settler. Yeah, there you go, you attack and weaken him. Excellent, good job. Your service to our empire is duly noted. <laughs> Good guy, Vilnius. We'll take that. Your progress for military tradition has advanced considerably. Victory over a barbarian outpost. Nice. So we go over here, take a look at that. So our next one in this line, military tradition, has been boosted. 
That's really cool. I really like that system. Uh, okay, we're gonna move away because we're hurt. And I think what I'll do is I'm gonna go ahead and end this one here, folks. If Again, if you've got suggestions or ideas, let me know. I look forward to your feedback, and I hope that you're gonna enjoy Civ 6 as much as I am. Thanks so much for watching. Till next time, I'm Mal, and I'll see you later.